The next player type is the builder and building is now a very important part of X4 and you can uh, first get a plot for building your own station that's uh, basically just reserving the space and you have to be careful where you do that because it could be pricey and cost money to just reserve space for a station depending on uh, what faction owns the space. You can just ignore that and, and simply uh, reserve a plot anyway, but in that case you might uh, upset the faction and sooner or later they might attack you. So it's, uh, it's probably a good idea to either pay the price for the plot or find a space where you don't have to. Uh, the more remote areas of space uh, that are not controlled, which are maybe not so good for later delivery, um, are still uh, uh, favorable sometimes because they are cheaper for getting a plot. Next you start the plan build menu and here you basically put together a station from modules. Those modules on the left side of the menu can be basically used like Lego stones. You put them together and form and design your own station. In the beginning you only have a few modules available on the left side of this menu but uh, later in the game you get more and more blueprints. Either you buy them from faction bosses or you get them illegally by scanning data leaks on stations again. This also might require a little bit of research, an activity that I talk about a little later. As you can see, the modules in the building menu um, come in different types. So the most important ones are the production modules. Productions are the parts of the station that constructs wares, makes wares from resources. Uh, but then you also need a storage where the both the resources for the production go, as well as the outcome, the result of the production. Um, other things are living sections for the workers on a station that help you improve the efficiency of a production. Um, also a docking mo module, of course, in order for ships to be able to trade with your station is needed. Later you can also add a pier for larger ships to, uh, to dock to your station. Um, and many other modules that are just there for connecting or for uh, constructing a station that fits exactly your design. After you decided for the initial design of your station, which you can later of course change and improve at any point in time, um, you also have to decide how to pay for it, if you will. Um, you can either bring the necessary resources for building directly to a build storage, or you can just hand over money to the station's budget and uh, create buy offers for your build storage automatically. In that case, NPCs will be bringing those wares directly to you. In the plan build menu, you will also have to assign a builder ship to your construction place. And uh, that ship can be, be hired from NPC factions and just assigned to the construction place. And it will stay there as long as you give it something to do. After a while, uh, after that, it might go away again, but you can later hire another one. Once the resources are there, your plan makes sense and the builder ship is available, construction automatically begins and you can see the welding drones buzzing around your station and you can watch it being built. Of course you don't have to and you can just let, let it sit there and this happens in the background while you will be away uh, playing missions or doing other things. Once a station becomes operative as a factory, you can use the logical station overview menu to see what's going on inside. This menu shows you nicely the production modules and the storage and how they are connected. So if, as soon as you have multiple production modules, you can basically see the flow of your wares inside of your station. On the one side, the resources that come in, into the first storage, then the first production module that takes the resources out of that, refines them or produces something out of it, puts that into a storage and then you can build a chain of multiple productions. And, and here in this menu, you can see all of this in a logical overview. This menu is also interactive and you can open every production and every storage and control exactly how the manager of your station is supposed to operate it. By default, it will all be automatic. And that means both the storage levels for every resource and product will be decided by the manager, but also how much he, he should pay for the resources that he wants other NPCs to bring. So you can set up 
uh, manual budgets and you can also set up manually how much storage space you want to be reserved. But you have to be careful because um, your storage is limited and um, it can always happen that because you are producing wares you run out of space for, for this certain budget and then your, your production cannot operate anymore. So uh, the automated uh, management of uh, uh, storage space is actually normally a good idea in order to operate everything at best efficiency. Efficiency is a key word here by the way because um, normally you always make a station more productive by making it bigger, by adding more production units or by having a second station and more, more storage as well. But um, the real way to make more, um, make more wares in the same amount of time uh, is what we call efficiency improvement and the best way to get that in your station is by getting more workforce. Workforce requires living sections which are very expensive and hard to get, especially the blueprints are expensive, but once you have them you improve the efficiency of your productions and basically can produce more goods per time, which means much more money. The ultimate goal for every player who is a real builder is of course his own shipyard and that's the the last step if you will because it's it's the the top of our pyramid of wares at the bottom you have uh, resources that you mine and then they are refined into higher and higher products and at the very top you you build either ships or stations out of it and you can do it all yourself your own shipyard will be producing your own ships in the very best case, you are not anymore buying the resources for your station from NPCs, but actually manufacture everything yourself. So the only thing that you buy or get manually is the resources at the very bottom of a station and then you have your entire chain included in your own station or you build up a supply chain between your own stations so that you become completely independent of NPCs. I have mentioned storage for your station and I have mentioned the build storage. It's important to distinguish between the two. A build storage is needed at the beginning and contains the resources that your station needs to build. Whereas the normal station storage is the sum of all the storage modules that you put on a station and where the products as well as the resources go. Um, sometimes you might want to move wares from your station storage into your build storage. Um, the easiest way to do that is to just add trade drones to your station, in which case all of that goes automatically. That's also an advantage, by the way, for trading, because trade drones make it possible to more quickly empty trade ships. So it's always a good idea to have trade drones either on your trade ships or on your station. But if they are on the station, you also automatically move, can move wares from your build storage to your normal storage. A very special station to build on in X4 is the headquarter. The headquarter is part of the plot, which I will be talking about a bit more in the think section. Um, but it's also very useful for the builder because it allows you to get one um, important feature of the game, which is called research. And research un unlocks important things like teleportation later in the game. So improving your headquarter can be an essential part of building as well. Other branches of the research activity that are unlocked with this plot also include research for mods. Mods are the very best way to improve weapons, ships and engines for very advanced players. Another cool thing to build are venture docks. Venture docks are our gateway into the online gameplay. You add an adventure dock to one of your station and that allows you to send ships to other player universes on ventures. Ventures also reward you in the game with very nice rewards coming from those parallel universes of other players. Um, and of course, when you, when you participate in this gameplay, you also see visitors to your own universe. Ventures can also help you improve the skills of your pilots and not just your pilots, but also the crew aboard those ships. And as you heard, uh, crew skills are very important for advanced activities, so it's always a good idea to send pilots on ventures. 
One module type that I haven't mentioned yet are defense platforms. They can also be added to every station and help your station to be safe against enemies. Normal modules can sometimes also be equipped with weapons and that's being done in the loadout menu of the plan build uh, interface. If you are into the design aspect of the game, you might also want to design ships. And uh, you can of course do that with uh, upgrades and designing your ship on the modular level of applying uh, engines and so on. Um, but there's also the possibility to, uh, to change the color and, and uh, texture of your ship. Uh, and you do that with the design uh, uh, menu. And uh, one thing that you can apply here are also paint mods. Paint mods can, um, can be found in ventures. So if you play the online gameplay, you can get uh, um, paint mods as a reward. This video is part of a series explaining the features of X4 Foundations. There are parts about trade, fight, build, think, explore and strategy gameplay. Choose the next one you are interested in from the Egosoft YouTube channel or the playlist to watch them all in one session.